like to pray for everyone that we could all feel joy. And I am peace. asking for prayer for my family. I would like family. to ask prayer for the unity between different congregations. Please pray with me uh, for my uh, nation. We pray for successful operations. Please pray. It will be a safe journey. We need to pray for their well-being. We pray that you will unite us, unite us to be good brothers. You have given victory, Lord. Thank you for leading and guiding us. Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Praise. I'm Yair Pinto, and together with me as always is Monica Yaguri, my co-host. How are you doing? Doing wonderful, thank you. And you? I'm doing great, and I'm really excited for today's guest and for today's show. It's very, very special because it's also, uh, this year it's Passover and Easter at the same time, so it's, you know, double the, it's basically what happened in, in the times of Jesus. It's exactly uh, aligned this year. And we're very excited. And I would like to introduce uh, two very special guests. They are a volunteer in Israel for five years. They're intercessors, so they wake up at five in the morning to pray every day, right? Kim. <laughs> so welcome, Kim and Marsha, to, to Jerusalem Praise. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Yair, for having us here. Thank you, Monica, for having us on the station today. Mm -hmm. uh, we are blessed to be in Israel and, and blessed to be on your show and able to volunteer in, in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And I think that this is going to be very uh, monumental uh, in what we have to present today. Good, good. You know, I just hope that we have enough time to get everything in the show. <laughs> yes. So I think we'll need uh, God to help us with that. So Monica, maybe if you can lead us in prayer. So. All right. Abba Father, we just thank you so much uh, that you brought us here uh, mm -hmm. together with you. And uh, we just do ask you that you unite us in your spirit, also with the viewers. And uh, thank you that your word says where two or three are together in your name. You are there in the midst of them. And uh, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace and, and your help today, Lord. I ask you to lead us and guide us and and help mm -hmm. us to bring glory to your name, Lord, uh, with every word we say and everything we do and think and, and feel. And we just want to bless you and praise you. And, and we want to say that we we'll love you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And today's topic is understanding the signs of the times during a season of war. And um, this is very, very interesting also because, as I said, this year was... Um, Easter and Passover come, came together at the same time, but Ramadan. also also Ramadan mm -hmm. uh, is uh, is a holiday that is celebrated now at the same time. So it's like creates a lot of tension, I think, uh, spiritually in the land of Israel. But I think before we go deeper into that, maybe Monica, you can maybe read us a few Bible verses about uh, about the signs, and then we'll go to our guests. Uh, there is a specific scripture, and uh, some people have heard, maybe perhaps the sons of Issachar, and, and uh, that they used to know the signs of the times. Mm -hmm. And uh, so everybody knows that. But the context, usually, uh, like, it, it's it's not maybe not so known. Everybody just knows it's a signs of the times, and they were really special, and they were given this anointing to know and discern, you know, what's going on and what to do. But if you read the actual context and the scripture, then it all talks about war, and it talks about, uh, actually, David, King David, when... He was uh, in, uh, as fugitive. And so all of it says how men gathered around David and they were all mighty men of valor. And uh, we're not going to read the whole scripture, but viewers and everybody can like the whole chapter. You, you can read it at home. But then, um, so uh, the scripture about the sons of Issachar is uh, 1 Chronicles 12 and then the verse is 32. And it says, all the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all the brethren were at their command. But then the chapter starts that now these were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men helpers in the war. And verse 22 says, For at that, that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army like the army of God. And 23 as well. Now these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war and came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. And uh, all these men of war could keep ranks, came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel and all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. So that was uh, verse 38. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so... 
the sons of Issachar were among them, but then specific, specifically it, they were mentioned in the middle of all these wars and all these men gathering around David to help in the time of war. So, uh, but you have some really special, special knowledge and insight from the Lord and uh, lately also even in relevance to uh, uh, the war happening in Ukraine and between uh, Russia and Ukraine and, and, and different times. So if you want to share. So. Maybe you can start by saying, uh, Where are you from originally, uh, yeah, and what got you to Israel? Well, actually, um, it started in 2016. My pastor sent me on a mission uh, to learn about the prayer houses. Okay. So I went to IHOP in Kansas City, and then she sent me to uh, Sukkah Hillel. Mm -hmm. And while I was living in um, Jerusalem for three months, I was able to visit most of all of the prayer homes. So from Washington, D.C. to Jerusalem, I stayed uh, at Sukkah Hillel. I visited the City of David, Jerusalem Prayer Towers, uh, House of Peace, uh, the Prayer Towers from the, in the Cloud Building. I stayed in the Prayer Towers. So God just knew that our hearts were stationed to be watchmen and prayer warriors in the land mm -hmm. and when I went back and my husband wasn't with me but when I went back the Akela uh, the church sent us together mm -hmm. to is Israel to live so here we are Wow! and the way that we were able to manage to stay uh, with some stability was to become volunteers at Christian Friends of Israel mm -hmm. uh, that has uh, projects uh, that address uh, six groups in the land mm -hmm. uh, with with benevolence, basically. The Holocaust victims, IDF soldiers, brides in the land that need to get married. Uh, my wife is uh, the Ethiopian Jewish project person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is hope for the future. My project is First Fruits. Mm -hmm. I'm the liaison for the Amatah to the believing community of believers in Yeshua. And we also have the two projects uh, specific to terrorist victims, mm -hmm. communities under attack and, and also under his wings, uh, which has been un unfortunately kind of prevalent in the news the last week or so. Yeah. So that's uh, cfijerusalem.org, and that allowed us to be in the land uh, as volunteers for this uh, long. That's amazing. I know I know your organization from the... Um, from the um, wedding dresses that you guys uh, rented for free for um, people who wanted to get married because it's very expensive uh, yes. to buy a wedding dress. <laughs> so I remember my, my wife went to take a look at the, at ah. the stuff. But can we maybe um, get back to the, sure. to the sure. uh, you know, the intercession and the prayer points because our viewers really want to know, you know, how to read the signs and maybe a few prayer points about, about these times and what to focus on. Mm. Well, one of the things um, that is very, I think, uh, important for prayer and, and operating in the Isaiah, uh, Issachar anointing mm -hmm. is to understand um, when the Lord is speaking and being very sensitive to um, mm -hmm. be effective in prayer times. I was talking to my husband about uh, back in September when we were in intercession And I saw an image of the Russian, the, 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 the hand, and the, the sickler. And I said, so what is this? And he said, I think this is a sign from Russia. And yeah, the hammer and sickle. And the mm -hmm. hammer and sickle. Mm -hmm. Nothing was going on, but for what? To pray for Russia. Mm -hmm. So this was a manifestation, if you will, of the anointing of the sons of Issachar. Mm -hmm. Just being very sensitive to win the times and the seasons to pray. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very key. No, I think it's really, it's really important also because I think there is this uh, way that we're used to, to live that, okay, there is something bad that's happening or good, and then we pray, either thanking God or, you know, praying for God's help. But I think that, you know, God's power and the power of prayer is stronger than that. I think that we need to be ahead of the events because we have, I mean, the anointing, the Spirit of God, So, as you said, I mean, we should seek God's word beforehand and lead, like, the battle. Like, like it was in the Bibles that, uh, that Israel sent the, the worshipers and, uh, you know, and the trumpets before the soldiers. 
into into battles and stuff like that. So I think we should be that also as prayer leaders. So keep keep on. <laughs> well, you're, you're so true. And um, I, another time I was in the prayer house at Sukkah Hallel and have a time of worship. And I saw an image of my son who at the at that time was in the army working with um, getting ready to go to Afghanistan. Mm. And I saw him in, a, in, in this open vision as I was praying and singing and worshiping on this roof. And I was like, in my spirit, I was like, why is he there? Something is not right, you know, and I had this spirit of fear. But the song that was praying was, we have not a spirit of fear. I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. And I started just worshiping and interceding interceding and all of a sudden angels came out of no everywhere I mean I won't say nowhere because we know yeah. <laughs> and surrounded him and he just jumped off this roof two weeks later he's I get a message from him he said mom you won't believe this on the way to Afghanistan they um, gave us the wrong route we ended up in Istanbul we were all in army gear it is a, a group of us, and we couldn't do anything but power walk through the airport. No mm -hmm. one touched them. They got on the next plane and flew out. And I mm -hmm. know that was a precursor. Mm -hmm. God does that when he is truly helping us in times of war, mm -hmm. in times of peace, that we are so sensitive to his, his uh, unction. The Holy Spirit gives us the unction to pray and how mm -hmm. to pray. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we are um, being availing, availing ourselves mm -hmm. yes, to pray. Mm -hmm. And it begins with our relationship with Yahweh. Uh, intimacy, mm -hmm. Daniel says, they who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Mm -hmm. And so in order to have that advance notice, as you say, if we're in an intimate place with him, who steps and stands outside of time and stands outside of space, then we can understand what is coming because he is uh, the, the Aleph and, and, and the uh, Taf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's Alpha and Omega. And since he knows the end from the beginning, if we're tuned into his heart and to, to how he sees things, then we can get a, a definite understanding regarding mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the prayer that we need to pray uh, whether it's a prayer of, of protection, a prayer of uh, uh, prevention, mm -hmm. a prayer of, of, of victory, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a pro to declare victory before the fact. So supernatural things occur, as, as we have heard in this land, that occurred during the 67 war and the 73 war. Yes. And, and uh, the, the basis of the modern state, and not only the, the previous state of Israel, but the modern state of Israel, is based on a miraculous, and we want to agree with that as mm -hmm. believers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's so basically what you say is very important to be tuned in with with the Spirit of God in order to understand what to pray for. But how, in in practice, how can we be tuned in with the Spirit of God? I mean, what uh, what do you do in order to keep yourself aligned uh, with God? Well, there's there's a couple of principles. Uh, there's a principle of position, and seeing yourself in heavenly places as God has placed us. Uh, on the throne with him. So not only seeing God for who he is, but seeing the world as God is seeing it. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a principle of practice, uh, exercising the authority that we have in Yeshua uh, in these heavenly places, because we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar set-apart people, and we will show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, and light there doesn't just mean, light means revelation. Uh, uh, light means uh, completely understanding what is going on. And that's, that's the position that, that we operate from. And, and when we uh, agree uh, or release our voice in agreement with the voice of, of, of our Abba, then things uh, happen in the natural world that normally would not. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Monica, maybe you can give our viewers a few practical tips on how to, you know, keep a good relationship uh, with God. I know you're big on, you know, intercession. And, no, I and was going to ask you, uh, what, do you, what do you do? Uh, what are your tips? You get up at five o'clock every morning and, and yeah, so yeah. Is this, uh, to pray. And is this uh, like some people are night people, some people are morning people. But uh, there are lots of scriptures in the Bible that talk about morning, you know, mm -hmm. and then giving God the first fruit. So. But then at the same time, Israel, day starts, according to the Bible, it starts in the evening. Exactly. <laughs> like when the sun has set, the new day already starts. So, so oh, how really do you see good. that or how, how does it help you? Well, the word does say, early in the morning will I seek ye, like the deer that panted for the water. Um, I have been getting up early for the past 27 something years mm -hmm. what's and early what like, time <laughs> it started at 3 a.m really and, um, <gasps> and my first tour here um when i went back to the states the lord said he will give me assignments now i want you to get up at four and go to the church and lay down and pray so i did that for like five months um and he would give me assignments here and there how to, to when to do what, especially early in the morning, what to pray, how to to engage the word. And um, I, the simplicity of it is truly being obedient, mm. but allowing yourself to be conditioned. Whereas I am so thirsty, I am so hungry that I get up early. And, and we've been doing this for the past, well, um, over 20 something years. Mm. But to get up in the morning and have a you know a worship time, staying stay in the, you know in a place where you allowed His presence to take over. You know our, our minds race. Mm -hmm. You know we're thinking of different things, but it takes you know praying in the spirit and then getting to a place where you're settled and quiet. And then He start. It's a reciprocity. He start revealing. Mm -hmm. You know many ministries have come up to me through this intercession time. Mm -hmm. And he starts revealing, and, and then from there is from the word, from the intercession, from the, being still, listening to the word, and you know, and then just having a time of just writing down and journaling what, what is the blueprint, what is the, the, the marching orders, if mm -hmm. you will, for to, what to do next. Yeah, I think it's also um, like uh, the discipline or the stability or oh, sometimes yeah. or start somewhere with a few steps or if uh, uh, you're just a beginner, then five to 10 minutes and then increase 10 minutes, 15 minutes and, and so on. And sometimes I think the problem is, and I've done that in the past as well, that sometimes you pray and nothing happens or you can't even get your mind quiet or you don't get anywhere or feel that God mm -hmm. is like a uh, hundred miles away or, or something, but then, uh, and then People hit a wall and then they quit and then, well, God doesn't want to talk to me and that's it, you know. And, and so what, what's the point of going or doing anything? But but just to keep at it and, and believe that Bible promises that God will talk to you. He talks to his, he leads his lambs, he leads his sheep and, and uh, they will hear his voice. And so it will eventually come and it will eventually everything will, it, it will start happening. Definitely. And then sometimes mm -hmm. like uh, you've uh, heard the scripture in the Bible that the voice of God came to prophet Elijah. First, um, there was a, a big noise, a rumbling and an earthquake and a big wind. And, and then in the end, there was this, lots of things happened before God finally told. If you would have quit after one or something or, or, or third <laughs> step, then, you know, you wouldn't have heard the voice of God. So it's just the persistence and, and uh, little by little, step by step, uh, and, and you, you will get there. And uh, yeah. I, I love that because one of the, the, the main things, like you, you mentioned, many times people are looking or feeling something is supposed to happen big. And uh, as the voice, the small, still voice spoke to Elijah, we don't have to look for things that are huge. Mm. God speaks to us through his word. He may speak to us through a, an utterance, but we are just in looking for the relationship. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like when you uh, someone is first starting to date and you're not trying to do anything but get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So I, we may be just sitting and just having some tea and just, but you are forming a a relationship, uh, you're forming uh, a, a place where you understand one another. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to do with the Word and with the, with the Spirit of God. 
if it's a first timer and someone is, you know, I want to get closer to the Lord, just find a quiet place. Find a place where you're not distracted mm -hmm. and sit in his presence. Sit in with music. Just be, avail yourself to be his. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, that's what we want to do. Give ourselves to yeah. be his. Amazing, amazing. <clears throat> I, I would like to just now, you know, stop the, the talking. Maybe you can lead us in prayer, Marsha, for that our viewers will, you know, spend time and that God will really speak to them and teach them how to pray and also, you know, start create this, this relationship because we, we serve a personal God. He wants a personal relationship. So, and I know it's not easy also, also for me, you know, to, to take the time and to clear the head from all the tasks that go and I have two kids that are running on me. So I, that's why I guess mornings are good before anybody wakes up. So maybe you can pray for God to help us all. Yes. So, Abba, Abba, Father, I thank you right now for those that are listening, Lord God, attentively, wanting to be closer to you. I thank you, Father God, for, first of all, for their heart, that you look at the heart. You're not looking for the sacrifices and the different things, but you're looking for a very humble heart. And I thank you, Abba, for those that have, Lord God, the heart to, to come to you with no agenda, but to know you more deeply, more and love you, Lord God, more. And Father God, as you love them, I pray, Father God, for a, Lord God, for opportunities, Lord God, to, in, to start this journey with you, Lord God. I pray for the mothers at home, Lord God, that the children, when they are uh, and when they are sleeping in the bed, that they will get up early in the morning, just to spend time with you, Lord God, to start their day, Lord God, in peace and rest. Lord God, I pray for the businessmen. I pray for those, Lord God, that have, Lord God, a very hectic schedule to begin their morning, Lord God, mm -hmm. in your presence, yes, to offer up sacrifice, the, uh, thanksgiving, Lord God, of gratitude, Lord God. I thank you, Abba, that you will pour out your blessings upon them, Lord God, yes, that they will feel your anointing, your presence with them throughout the day, that will give them the shalom, the peace that passes all understandings. We thank you and we're grateful for what you are what you are going to do in their lives. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Amen. 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 Well, as I said, the time time flies, and uh, now I would like to ask you to give our viewers, you know, three prayer points. It can be about Israel, it can be in general about the situation in the world, so that they can focus on that, and then we'll go to our second part. Uh, All right. Of the show. One of the points of prayer I would give at this time uh, is uh, understanding that Daniel's prayer was answered immediately, even though he didn't see a result for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And with reference to what he was praying into, uh, the, uh, the principality over Persia, mm -hmm. uh, these national issues, national events uh, with Ukraine, uh, with Iran, Mm -hmm. uh, just be mindful that if you're praying on a level regarding these national issues of how nation states are interacting, that uh, you may not get a good feeling initially. But if you are steady and disciplined concerning the matter, uh, God will respond. And perhaps with the Archangel Michael, uh, who stands over Israel mm -hmm. uh, as the guardian angel, uh, he will also, uh, in Isaiah 28 and 6, he will give a longing for justice to their judges and he will give great courage to their warriors who stand at the gate. So uh, you can expect an in, in, uh, to be infused with uh, courage and infused with strength if you're standing at the gate and standing in the gap between the enemy and the nation or the enemy and your family uh, at this time of history. And uh, the right prayer, the right time when we speak, we speak as the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we pray and decree and declare as his voice in agreement on the earth at this Kairos time in history 
during this war season in history for the for the earth, uh, and uh, eth is the Hebrew, I believe, for uh, Cairo's timing, and so these are strategic times mm -hmm. that we pray uh, in intercession for the nation and for uh, all of the events that are going on uh, regarding uh, the war in Europe and uh, turmoil elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I think now we need to go to our uh, our last part because time is is flying. And could you please read uh, uh, the prayer request with a few maybe Bible verses of encouragement, and then we'll conclude with uh, a prayer for all of them. And I'll encourage you back at home to really pray for the people who ask uh, these requests. And if you have your own requests, you can send them to us. You can post them on the comment box, and please pray for each other. That's the the purpose of this uh, program. Oh, go ahead. All right. Uh, so maybe we'll have time for two prayer requests today. Uh, uh, Rita is uh, saying that um, she's an amputee and she has unbelievable pains at time. And also her spouse of 42 years has, uh, has left her. So she's asking for prayer and also that she loves messianic worship and loves Israel, but doesn't have a, a community, a like-minded community. Also, we have had a prayer request from Karian. Um, she would like to do something and be involved and active um, uh, for God, but for some reason, God, uh, it, she hasn't received yet what exactly she is to do, and she, she feels that she doesn't have a uh, education for it, uh, anything either, but um, this is not a problem to God. So uh, we'll just lift uh, both of these requests before you, uh, Abba, and uh, thank you that by your stripes we were healed, Lord, and, and you carried our pains, and and uh, that you would uh, it would help Rita, and also that you are her comforter, and, and you promised to be uh, her husband, Lord, and father to the uh, uh, fatherless, and uh, you have promised to be a very present help in trouble, Lord, and that you are also able to connect her with the community, Lord, uh, and uh, by divine appointment, either by online or send somebody to her door or give her a chance to get out uh, and, and meet like-minded people, Father, and uh, also to help her. And also for Carrie Ann, Father, thank you that for leading and guiding her mm -hmm. and uh, giving her the right things to do at the right time and uh, that she doesn't have to rush and uh, uh, that uh, uh, her lack of education is not a problem for you, Father. Mm -hmm. Like you told me in the past that you will be the paper. You are all that is needed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. So sadly, this is all the time that we have. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Marsha, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you to our viewers. And let's conclude with the priestly blessing. So please join me back at home and join me here in the studio. Yevachecha Adonai v'ishmarecha. Ya'er Adonai panav alecha ve'echunecha. Isa Adonai panav alecha ve'yasem lachem shalom. Shalom alechem. And on a personal note, I would like to ask you to pray for Jonathan. Jonathan Hessen and his family have been sick for a few days now. He's still been writing the news from home, but we'd like to see him back in the studio here with us. So please keep him and his family in your prayers. 